Hello, bonjour, namaste, ni hao, and oh hi everybody. What is going on? It is Gail Wright here, and welcome back to the YouTube channel once again for another Danmachi Bio Chronicle video. And today we are back with yet another build guide, and today's build guide is the final one for the hostess of fertility characters, as we are going to be doing a build guide for Lenore. Now, of course, if you guys haven't checked out the previous ones, we've done one for Anya and Chloe already, so you guys can go and check those out. But today, of course, it's all about Blackfist Lenore. So of course if you guys want to enjoy today's video Please be sure to leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel for more content, and let me know in the comment section down below which of the three do you like the most? Which one do you want? Do you want Anya, Chloe, or Lenore? Let me know in the comment section down below. Now, Lenore is a very interesting unit. I really like the design of her kit, to be quite honest. It kind of reminds me of a more offensive version of Asfi, in a way, to be honest, right? Um, and you'll see why in just a moment. But the biggest issue with Lenore, for I think a lot of people, is that she's releasing right after the release of earth bell and of course both of them sharing the same typing a lot of people might be like well i don't need an er another earth unit right necessarily i don't really need another earth unit and i'd completely get that but especially with uncharted battlefield and of course the potential for more difficult content coming up in the near future we know that there is a pve content coming in june we don't know what that entails will we need multiple units we don't know but if we do need it, then Lenore is still a fantastic option. Now, the positive thing about Lenore and the rest of the Hostess of, Fer of Fertility units is that they are all non-time limited. So you don't need to summon on their banners to get them. They will be available in the regular gacha for one. And two, they will also be available in the general pool for other banners that will come in the future. So, of course, if in, even if you don't summon for her now, you will get her inevitably thanks to the regular gacha and, of course, the guaranteed tickets that we will be getting down the line inevitably right so that is the advantage of of course you know these three being non-time limited and generally having non-time limited units in the game now Lenore is a very interesting unit like I said I do think that she's a very fascinating unit in all honesty and if we take a look at her a zero first and foremost so her normal attack just like the other hostess of fertility units and a majority of the rest of the game her normal attack has an attack multiplier of 124.8 percent very similar to a lot of other units front facing AU attack and hits four times not a major difference there to be quite honest again something i'd like to see in the future is more variety in the normal attack i really do hope they do something there skill one is fists or nothing attack multiplier of 156 percent a 400 cooldown single front facing aoe attack and it has a 40 percent chance to grant 19.5 percent strength or 19.5 percent magic or 90 uh, 97.5 percent action skill damage or 65 percent special move damage increase i mean the thing is right each chance is separate. It's not a 40% chance of proccing one of those four. It's a 40% chance each. So it's a 40% chance for strength, 40% chance for magic, 40% chance for action skill damage, and a 40% chance for special move. So you can proc any of those, and you can proc all four of those at the same time, or you can proc none of those. It's like, it depends on your luck, basically. You can proc three, maybe not one. You can proc two, maybe not the other two, and so on and so forth. It's just random. And unfortunately if i'm not mistaken if we jump it up a bit in the awakenings yeah the percentage chance of granting that doesn't necessarily go up i wish it did i think that's one of the things i would have loved to have seen but i think this is pretty cool in all honesty the strength and magical ability increase so the strength and magic increase can also be stacked up twice not the skill move or special move damage unfortunately but the beauty of that as well is that the skill one already has two stacks from the get-go so with the ability board that can go up to three stacks as well i think that is fantastic in all honesty that that is insanely good and it honestly makes her such a interesting unit to use especially if you can get all of her buffs going with uh you know the ability to use her skill one again and again and again amazing 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 unit right there and especially i think if you can proc all of it at the same time have all the stacks available and stuff I think that she is a really strong unit because you're getting so many buffs and whatnot with this one skill alone. It's what I said with Anya, right? Is that if the character has some form of buffs and everything, it'll make them really good. And that's what's happening here basically with this Lenore. She's able to buff herself. Yes, it's a chance to buff herself, 
but I mean a 40% chance and based on my testing in the trial mode and according to a lot of other people, it's fairly often that you proc at least one or two of those uh, buffs in all honesty. So it, to be quite honest, especially if you have the three stacks, you should be in a very good position to launch these uh, buffs in all honesty. I think the one thing I would have loved to see maybe that would have made it even better is if the cooldown was 200 instead of 400 like water bell i think that would have made her insane because you would have ha been able to continuously keep this uh going keep these buffs going no matter what it would have been insane it would have been insane her second skill is very basic it's an attack multiplier of 156 percent flying fist that is it has a 400 cooldown so yes it has actually a half time cooldown effectively so it is an 800 cooldown like all the other skill twos it's a 400 cooldown so you can actually get her skill two off just as fast as her skill one it is a front facing aoe attack and it hits one time with a maximum stacks of two so just like skill one you start with two stacks on skill two as well and with the ability board you can go up to three stacks of the second skill again insane insane there her special move is very basic it's a 390 percent attack multiplier 1200 cooldown so a lower cooldown as well for the special move so that is insane as well to be honest and that's the reason why the attack multiplier is quite low as well because the cooldown is low as well front facing AoE attack and it hits one time now at a1 you also get a 10 percent earth damage increase as well for 10 seconds and it's a 450 percent attack multiplier we already saw the a2 it's a very basic boost to all the numbers basically and that's about it a3 also is a numbers boost uh, effectively and then a5 as well is a numbers boost as well 600 and 20 percent earth damage i mean in my opinion i think you want to go for skill one her special move and then her normal attack probably and then her second skill her second skill is good but i think her skill one is the most important followed by the special move followed by the normal attack i think that is what you're going to be going for massively the second skill you will definitely use here and there but you want to just make sure that you can keep getting the buffs as much as possible so that is what i would personally do i'd focus on skill one then the special move then the normal attack and then skill two i would that's how i would personally do it in all honesty now if we take a look at uh effectively her range and i want to talk about her range a little bit because uh especially when it comes to units like these where i don't own them i like to use them one more time to give you guys my thoughts on the range and play style obviously with earth bell and artemis the build guys i did for them i didn't need to show them off because i've used them quite often and i know how good they are I really find myself interested as to how Lenore moves with her fists, to be honest. She's, I think, one of the first units to do it outside of, like, uh... Uh, outside of, like, Bet, of course, using her, uh, melee attacks effectively, no weapons of sort. But her range is really good, in all honesty. If you look at the range, it's very good. She's able to buff herself up there. We procced nothing there, by the way. We got very unlucky. But the range is very good. So is the range of the ultimate as well. The uh, uh, the normal attack there. And as you can see, we managed to get two buffs there. Uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. You can see we're getting buffs there as well. Beautiful stuff there. Now, of course, if you want to know what buffs I'm getting, you can see at the bottom of your screens right now, there's like a one there. Um, didn't get any buff there. Got a buff there. We got a, a stack of strength and magic as well. Again, the 40% chance can go in your favor it can't go in your favor i think i got re really unlucky there a lot of the times i used the skill one there i didn't get her proc off unfortunately but i think especially if you can do it regularly i think with the three stacks as well with uh, obviously a higher uptime of keeping you know the uh, skill one going i think you'll be able to use lenore to a greater degree i think out of all three units right it's all very interesting right you could argue and say that Anya is probably the most consistent out of the three. Chloe is following that, of course, with her poison capabilities, right? And then it's Lenore. But at the same time, I think the higher ceiling goes to probably a unit like Lenore, then Chloe, and then Anya in terms of strength. So it's quite fascinating in that sense, right? As to how you can judge the unit's strengths now, right? Now, of course, when it comes to the assist side of things, right? It's pretty simple, of course, when you're looking at the type-based ones, Lily and Chigusa are probably the best options for her. You can also use the likes of, of course, this uh, Hestia as well, who does give Earth damage as well as normal attack damage on her assist skill with a really low cooldown as well. 
25 seconds is pretty insane to be quite honest right she also gives normal attack damage and stuff which helps out massively um you could use loki as well but loki obviously increases the damage you take as a unit right so that's the only reason why i wouldn't necessarily completely recommend her to be quite honest hestia is still one of the best options of course if you're not looking for somebody on typing like a lily uh like this lily or even this dress chigusa as well right for example right so just keep that in mind i think uh you know in terms of assist options i'd say lunor is fairly covered in all honesty especially if you've been playing for a decent amount of time in my personal opinion i think that will be uh something to take note of now in terms of the battle items, I mean, it's pretty straightforward yet again that you want to go for the Goliath robe. You want to obviously take advantage of the stats bonuses it gives. You want to take advantage of the damage increase and strength bonuses that you can get consistently throughout the entire fight rather than when you're just using it in fight, of course, right? Um, also, you could use the Hostess of Fertility item as well, the Staff Meal as well. Now, a lot of people were asking uh, with this, uh, you know, characteristic, it activates when the uh, Adventurer possesses the Employee of Fertility bonus, right? So, well, that is actually not for units like Ryu or Seer, unfortunately. They are specifically referring to units that have this tag specifically with uh, them in the categories li uh, list, basically. So you see here, demi-human, female, hostess of fertility, employee of fertility. Ryu and Seer don't have this employee of fertility tag. They only have the hostess of fertility tag, which... I don't get, I think they need to be a little bit more lenient with this sort of thing, but alas, that is just how the cookie crumbles when it comes to the Don Crow devs. I don't understand it. I believe it should have just been Hostess of Fertility. That way you could have used that battle item even on Ryu, but on, on right now you can only use it on Anya, Chloe, and Lenore, unfortunately. But, of course, that is still an option for players. Especially if you don't have the Goliath Rogue, for example. This is the next best option you have. You can get it right now, of course, right? The Vigor Amber as well is still a fantastic option, of course, if you are looking into that as well, right? So just keep that in mind, of course, right? Now, when it comes to scene cards, I think the best option to go for here is probably just focus on, you know... I would say probably either normal attack damage or action skill damage or your uh, special move damage because... You could go for stats or earth damage, I would say. You could go for stats like strength and magic. But the thing is, right, with um, with uh, Lenore's uh, buffs being random, right? You might be getting a strength boost. You might be getting a magic boost. It's a hard balance to, you know, maintain the two together. Like, for example, if you go for strength bonus, right? Here you get 44% strength. It's 100 strength you get from the stats, right? Great, right? But what if you get a magic bonus, right? What if you get a magic bonus? So... In that sense, you ideally, ideally, Lunore has to be kept at a neutral state when it comes to her stats, right? So you can see that she's got Strength 663, Intelligence 608. Understandably, it's a little bit more in favor of Strength, right? But ideally, you want to try and balance the two numbers because then you are going to effectively get a bonus from both sides effectively and you won't be suffering if you go for magic instead of uh, strength because then magic will give you less damage if you have a lower intelligence stat, right? Because remember, strength and intelligence are one half of uh, a whole attack stat effectively, one half of the whole damage stat, right? So if you go for more strength but your strength stat is lower, that means, well, you're not going to get as much of a bonus if you go for magic and you have a higher in magic stat, right? So you have to be careful on making sure for a unit like Lenore, especially who does give both strength and magic to herself and it's chance based. You want to go for a balanced attribute stat boost in all honesty. You want to go for a balanced attribute stat spread more so than anything else. And therefore, you will be in a better position accordingly. So just keep that in mind when you are using her is to make sure that battle items wise scene cards wise you are making sure that the unit is being as balanced as possible so maybe you could use this scene card that gives both strength intelligence and dexterity but the secondary scene card might want to preferably give a little bit of uh, intelligence potentially right maybe a little bit of intelligence uh, or more swing towards intelligence for some reason or another 
to help you out massively with just dealing a little bit more more consistent damage basically right you might want to go for that now of course it may be difficult to find where that scene card might be that would be perfect for you right but there are scene cards like that so just keep that in mind i mean the, like for example welcome to the ball is of course strength focused so it's not really the best example there but that is an example of a, a scene card that is focused on one side rather than the other side right so keep that in mind of course right um there are scene cards like that i will assure you guys there are scene cards like that even though i'm not able to find them at this moment in time of course right because there are obviously the stat based ones right like for example i think it is where is it where is it where is it, where is it? it is uh, this one. This one is giving magic, right? And of course it gives intelligence, but because it gives magic, it'll already increase the magic stat anyways, right? So that doesn't really help. You want to go for something more neutral based, if in all honesty, when it comes to the passive skill. And then the stats, preferably, at least one of the theme cards should index towards uh, magic, preferably, preferably. So yeah. Keep that in mind, keep an eye out on um, your scene cards list and see what you have and don't have that can maybe help you out a little bit in that favor. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about Lenore in the comment section down below. Hopefully this video could help you guys out in some way, shape or form if you are building up your very own Lenore. Um, of course, future build guides will be on other units. Don't worry, we will be making a uh, future build guide on units like Ataril, like uh, Eyes as well, and so on and so forth. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. Thank you guys all so much for watching this video. Please be sure to leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.